international school family so a warm welcome to you sir i hope you are i'm audible yes sir you are on mute i believe kindly unmute your mic someone muted me actually so <laughs> <laughs> okay so thank you so much for this warm welcome and showering with such kind words and uh, i i it, it's an honor to be here wonderful uh, i when i accepted uh, i must say frankly that when i accepted this uh, i didn't know what i am getting into myself <laughs> getting myself into rather so but then i when i saw the uh, very very able wise uh, knowledgeable panelists and uh, then i thought okay do i really belong to this category so no it's an honor to be here <laughs> no two ways so about nice it you, you are sir. one of the bright stars in that constellation of adharshilas that we have assembled over the last 38 uh, talks so <coughs> let me introduce you to the audience sure. so my dear friends today's topic is a very interesting and relevant one especially in the light of the new national education policy 2020 that talks of integrating arts into education and art integrating art integrated pedagogy as one of the most uh, emphasized pedagogies in the nep so today to understand about how music can revolutionize the way learning happens the way teaching learning process in the school happens and overall education happens for an individual we have mr abhijit patel with us here today mr patel is a singer a vocalist a voice over artist a performer he is a chemical engineer by qualification who has turned into an amazing singer as evident by his stage name sinjinia he is a singer vocalist and voice over artist performer for movies television commercials and live concerts Mr Abhijit has performed in his voice for renowned commercial with renowned musician AR Rahman and also sung for the movie Mohan Jidaro I can still feel the goosebumps um you know go back in time and remember when I had heard all these things for the first time when it, it got released and shared it with the friends that I know Apart from music as a passion he has a great interest in design technology and pursues learning in quantum physics critical thinking and vedanta philosophy i think the way he has blossomed his own personality goes again in sync with the aspirations of the new national education policy because it talks of breaking the silos between academic subjects considered you know highly academic subjects like science math etc with co curricular and things like sports etc or vocational vocational education so you know when you hear about a teacher who is into music who is an engineer who is into quantum physics and into vedanta philosophy so you know all that indianness uh, that you see in the way he delivers his uh, teaching learning with students everything is just in sync with how the education in india is expected to be we are very very keen to see what sir has to offer to us in terms of learning today just like all everybody else i'm equally excited so i leave everyone uh, to listen to sir with this beautiful thought music expresses feelings and thought without language it was below and before speech and it is above and beyond all words so when we talk of literacy and numeracy music goes much beyond 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 that so thank you once again welcome to mr abhijit and over to you sir the stage is set for you now thank you so much uh, i am really humbled i am really honored to hear such uh, kind words from you and with such an august audience here and uh, i hope i'm audible sufficiently loud yes sir you are okay, clear thank you so much and so like the participants to know that once sir presents you can uh, pin on sinjinia presentation sinjinia s i n g i n e e r and keep typing your thoughts questions in the chat box uh now it's totally over to you sir okay thank you so much thank you so uh, to uh, at the onset i re i'm really thankful for this opportunity to be here and to engage with you interact with you along with so many elite panelists as i mentioned before and uh, it is of really uh, a, a great interest to me to talk about this topic when uh, jay ma'am ask me like about music and integration so i find that it is uh, actually within me 
and uh, this is how i uh, began my teaching when i started as well that somewhere that engineer and that uh, musician singer in me always uh, they used to quarrel with each other sometimes um, sometimes they used to had a have a nice um, sorry sorry for the disturbance the virus so so sometimes uh, they were friends sometimes they were foes and uh, so the engineer name also arrived in my uh, like occurred to me and uh, so that itself is a integration singer and engineer so it was definitely of uh, with great interest to have an opportunity to talk about this so and let's begin so when i when i when i want to talk about uh, integration of music i have given a title it as music in and as integration uh, i hope you are able to see the slide that i have uh, opened and what i am going to do is uh, i'm going to look at a bit what and hows of integration so that's what you can expect to carry at the end of this uh, uh, like whatever talk session that we are having i'm trying to make it little interactive so i may ask a few questions uh, from you but not on chat because to manage the chat and then talk to you will be a little difficult i'm not used to that maybe people can do it but i may have uh, to have certain voice uh, re uh, reflections from you so i hope that's fine and that goes well with the system and the technology as well abhijit sir so uh, yes uh, it would be great if you could stop your presentation and restart it because uh, that might get affected in the recording because i had taken over the presentation so maybe you can stop your presentation and okay, present it again okay so i have stopped now and then i will again present it again so here we go so the first thing is first and foremost that uh, i would Abhijit, like to sir, would it be fine if, if if i read from the chat box read out to you yeah 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 sure sure so that coordination no, my, my, can do. like pleasure oh okay yeah sure ma'am please so nice of you thank you so we so, can't see the presentation i'm oh. not sure uh, i'm not able to see can you see now yeah yes sir yes sir can see now can you see now yeah because i had exited now i started again yes sir yeah now can you see yes okay yeah so so music is like maybe it's cliche but i would like to reiterate that it's a powerful tool that cuts across language barriers and even cultural barriers at times also music comes to us as naturally as talking walking and other basic functions of our body it is if i may say intrinsically integrated with the life on earth by merely being here we are already having it within us the only precondition is to be able to see this abstract connection within some of us can see the connection naturally or intuitionally and some of us might need it to be highlighted and so the need of the guiding light rather a helping hand but it doesn't stop just there music often ignored as an extracurricular subject on a disciplinary level has enormous opportunities for conceptual linkages that can be used to a learners and also teachers best advantage and hence this session before we proceed i would like to give a disclaimer that whatever i am presenting here in the content um only the compilation and the connections that i have made uh, they belong to me but all standard words terminologies are taken from the due respected um, original sources so when we say integration when we say the other pedagogical terms so these are all standard uh, terms and some of the principles are also uh, taken from the original resources and the due credit goes to them my compilation and these words are definitely mine the way i have absorbed or assimilated the pedagogy and music and the scientific uh, concepts i have just put it together here in a very short way uh, in the available time that i have so the question is uh, why and what to integrate first if we see so why do we integrate what is the main reason that we want to integrate so for that if we look at integration when we we look at disciplinary interdisciplinary or transdisciplinary linkages 
integration within the concepts. Uh, basically, it aims at connecting the dots. Basically, what we try to do is we connect our previous learnings and other subject learnings to this learning. And then we try to construct a different meaning and our own understanding from it. So for example, if we say, if I'm saying Kalyan Thad, out of the 127 participants may not have uh, any idea about it. What comes to your mind when I say Kalyan Thad? Anybody? It's a raga. It's a raga. OK. Anyone else? No. I just right. wanted so to and... and... Sorry. Yeah. So maybe hardly 2 3% of us, we know what about it. And those who do not know, those who haven't heard about this word, what comes to their mind? What is a, is there any picture in your mind to connect with that? And what's the connection? Could anyone just respond in a, in quickly? The land station room, absolutely right. I guess so. Because we try to connect with our prior knowledge. At, and those who know that it's some raga, they try Mangal to connect with the raga. Mangal Kari, Mangal Kari, Kalyan Ho. Kalyan, like yes. Absolutely. So what what we are trying to uh, like see that from Kalyan, someone can relate to a Kalyan station. Someone can relate to linguistically into Kalyan is like Mangal or Kushal Mangal or uh, like uh, some wishing someone well. Or, given, or, or giving uh, blessings or giving blessings. Yes. Kalyan Bhautu, Kalyan Bhautu is basically Kalyan Bhautu Matlab that was something made good happen to your uh, some may you be blessed something auspicious something good so yes but thought what's that so someone who knew about rag the person tries to say that it's a raga yeah good luck uh Murarka says yeah yeah tal <laughs> not exactly yeah but uh, thought is again a template of a raga Tile? not exactly a raga sorry Tile, sir. Tile? I, I, I can't understand. Could you please type that word? So style, yeah. So if you said style, yes, yes, that's that's a style. Okay, in a way, it's a style. It's a template of ragas. It's it's a it's a set of rules that define a raga, not raga itself. So uh, we can see that such connections. I would, yeah, I, mean, I would like you to know that there are many participants. In fact, majority of them who are from Kolkata, and we know Bengali oh. is to be great musicians. So, you know, I, I'm sure you are going to be happy with the responses here today. Yes, yes, yes. I can see so many connections there. And uh, uh, so nice, heartening to see that, uh, that uh, they are all, they, they can relate to the topic well. So, yeah, but that, to be precise, uh, as we all educators need to be, uh, it's not a raga per se, but it's a style in which a raga is made. It's a standard template or a format in which some ragas can be made. It's a set of rules. So. Uh, that's it. But then those who didn't know could relate to a substation or could relate to a linguistic parallel with Kalyan is like well, well being like that. Now, another word comes crush it. Sorry, there may be some uh, very interesting suggestions from the audience. But uh, looking at the time, I, I'm just uh, trying to take it a little faster ahead. Uh, yes, 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 Mr. Amit. Bengali people are really very serious, uh, sincere students of art, all kinds of arts. And if we go to Kolkata, um, like every alternate house, you will have some tabla player, or or if there is a girl, she may be playing a sitar and a singing or, or, or odyssey or dance forms. Absolutely, uh, it's a powerhouse of the all art forms for India, and uh, really, really uh, good to, to to see that even southern India. So they are also very uh, art loving people. I think we all have some arts in within us, and uh, that's going to come in the next slide. In fact, uh, as a matter of coincidence. So, what I'm just trying to come to is why is the integration happening, and what what can we achieve through that? So, cross it. Uh, if that word, maybe some people have not even read it or before, or they, it may uh, it so is not even an English word. Thread and needle. I do it very much. Okay, so. 
so a crotchet in music has some value attached to it in western music so a time duration it it points at <laughs> yes ma'am thread and needle okay but that uh, that that thanks to a typo actually that's a crotchet c r o t c h a t c h a t okay that crotchet so the crotchet musically means um uh, a, a time duration in music so what what came to your mind if you didn't know what is uh, if because of this spell check problem if that's it that has to be a needle uh, related to something sewing or something if not those who are totally unaware may keep thinking that what is it and i may not know about it so interlacing <laughs> it sounds like a insect or a bird yeah yeah uh, but if i say mango instantly you all have certain uh, image in your mind have don't you yes sir yeah so uh, yes. instantly you have either a raw mango or a ripe mango okay and typically a ripe mango with that uh, ripe mango color and you find it interesting to know about it probably did it happen that did you receive mango with a better interest than a kallan thart and a crotchet probably yes so many people are saying yes thank you so much thank you so much so making connection so you the moment you think that you know something about it your brain looks forward to learn about it looks forward to listen more about it finds it interesting and okay so something i know about it so maybe i can take this topic with some interest but something that you totally are unaware and is totally new your brain also is programmed to avoid some extra work naturally so i had done a, i had a, attended a workshop on how brain learns and how brain works and in that i had uh, understood i have formed this understanding with the expert there um and i i understood very well and i realized that yes when there are connections made our brain thinks that it knows about it and wants to learn more about it but if it is totally something out of box then some of many of us or most of us will be thinking of okay, here let's keep it for later maybe something too critical i don't know about it so that kind of a reaction happens when we are working with the concepts and some terminologies as well and we need to deliver them effectively and also we need to learn ourselves when we are learning so here is the conclusion is an informed mind learns better it tries to make connection somewhere i think personally this is somewhere we are re reaching to gestaltism anyone heard about gestaltism gestaltism yeah some yes. uh, connection makes the parts more than the some of the parts is more something like that right 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 these right. large people must be aware about it they may be using it uh, in it their is, uh, it also kind of conveys that the uh, wholeness connectivity is better than the parts yes yes so the sum total of the parts is different than the whole is the principle so what it actually mr suraj dube raised his hand yes so may i ask you what what do you want to say mr suraj mama okay mr dube left the meeting okay so that's how so many of us know and aware about gestaltism now what's the connection let's see so this theory is made up of six principles based on how your brain secretly works on associate objects as a whole then breaks them in down into individuals to make it evident here is something let's look at this what you see and what inference or what conclusion you can see yes it's an all but totally irrelevant objects when they are arranged in a certain way they create a different meaning altogether and our brain is programmed to see these kind of two big eyes as an owl and so instantly we confer that, uh, we infer or we conclude that yes the person who is arranging this dish in a way so that it looks like an owl perfect now this one what can we see here am i there in the meeting yeah yeah pieces of chess great dolly roy pillars okay chess 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 
wonderful so so how we perceive all of you can be right and all of you can be wrong if we say six people great so two people looking at each other wonderful 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 <laughs> support that's something different okay that's quite lateral thinking uh, yes pillars are support and uh, that's kind of a different uh, way to look at it yes pillars there are support and they're together so yeah the point here in question is the brain arranges the objects in their in its own way and whatever we are carrying the perception is it may differ but it certainly reads certain objects there observe them and makes connections see here this is if we can see uh, these shapes on the left they have no familiar shape absolutely we can't make any sense of all these things individually but they're arranged in a way and we fill the gaps the mind fills the gaps and it tells us that oh this is something um, the WWF right so I think I've made a point and I don't want to go further with this this was sufficient as I guess so so that uh, we all agree that yes when we try to arrange things in a certain way that the connections are visible rather than abstract even there are a few gaps or some abstraction is there the mind is able to complete the picture and it makes sense so this is how uh, what I want to make a point about gestaltism is we try to find out certain certain uh, building blocks components of the thing that we are trying to uh, explain or the concept that we are trying to explain and if we allow the mind freely to perceive it when after we arrange it structurally strategically we can create the meaning the learner can construct a meaning out of it and the brain works uh, secretly as we just read to make connections so it, it it works wonders when we try to connect such dots from different subjects and uh, then we try to arrive at a topic so here if we look at the elements or the building blocks suppose this is because this is regarding music uh, notes beats and pattern if you see if you if you refer to the last three slides that i shown you th those could be separate separate parts and they have been arranged in a certain way to make us perceive um, differently and depending upon how where we are coming from what our thoughts just a while ago or what regularly we are in touch we construct a meaning from that and all are right meanings they can be discarded they can't be discarded so notes beats patterns these are the building blocks of musical creations and uh, let's see how these can be also broken down to find some dots to connect we will discuss more about we'll just check what is note and what are the elements before that let me tell you that when i was doing my chemical engineering my lecturers used to tell me that you guys are getting these eight different topics and eight different subjects but when we were learning we used to only have two volumes of chemical engineering and from that chemical engineering we used to find out our relevant subject material from that book and we used to prepare for the exams so you are having such nicely defined textbooks and from that you are learning so what the point that i want to um, highlight is knowledge is all one we sometimes make them into packets to divide and make uh, like to make it easier to break down and then after we do that towards the end of our uh, masters and all we realize that all knowledge actually is coming into one simple kind of a formulation although we learned it as different different subjects so that was my personal experience that i wanted to share which my lecturer told me in chemical engineering that you are making it different different and breaking it down and getting it uh, into manageable pieces but we had the whole two volumes from that we used to learn and find out what is to be learned from that so yes the building blocks notes beats patterns so when we look at these building blocks and we are trying to make connections from other disciplines so what is a note how does it start from is the notes what are these notes how are they connected 
is there any parallel uh, analogy in any other subject beats what are the beats so when we try to break the things into smaller skills and smaller concepts, then we start finding the way to integrate with other subjects for example when i try to see at a note what is a note note is a sound it's not a currency note that we are talking about it's a musical note so it's a sound so the moment i say sound i know that there are properties of sound so if i consider when i'm teaching sound as a physics chapter or a physics lesson or a topic then i can make it interesting by drawing parallels with what are sounds in music and instead of using some dead sounds yes ma'am principal ma'am yes frequency wavelength and pitch so instantly these uh, scientific concepts come to our mind but rather than teaching them some uh, words like frequency or amplitude yes magnitude will be measured like how the amplitude of the wave the wavelength waves waveforms so uh, rather than uh, <clears throat> looking at them as these physics concepts if we begin with some kind of a musical notes uh, it instantly becomes uh, interesting for the uh, the children for the learner that wow something close to my heart rather than talking about hertz uh, what the unit of a frequency and the simple harmonics first and the second harmonics of the third, third harmonics or overtures and tones there can be a lot of terminologies which we can take them into gradually but to begin with if we draw some parallels with uh, the musical sounds and bring that in uh, for example the other day one of my physics uh, uh, teacher friend uh, from my one of previous school he asked me sir i'm trying to teach the harmonics to the children and i'm taking an example of a flute so could you tell me what is the how is this differential like how the first hole from the mouth and the last hole on the pipe on the flute which one should create the 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 lower frequency the the, the closer one or the the further one so he wanted my musical inputs um, about it and uh, he said that because you know both of the things i can only you are the only person or or one of those person whom i can reach and uh, reach out and ask that how how should i what is authentic knowledge about it what is that is making difference so so i tried to explain in the air column from where you are blowing and where the end is and uh, then we actually drew a table and we discussed about how the the different holes uh, apertures uh, created on the flute are creating different frequencies so that's uh, one interesting way that you try to take a flute and play a flute and create certain whatever notes they may not be musical but that kind of uh, integration will help you as well to revisit those concepts of, uh, of physics of sound that you learned when you were a learner and now you're trying to teach so it, it also helps us deepen and widen our understandings and hence uh, integration helps in that way that we can make the things interesting at the same time we can see life as a whole rather than just being independent parts that how they connect and form a whole um, as they say in the vedas like isha vasya midam sarvam yakinche jagatyam jagat so isha is in everything and uh, we can find the element of isha in everything and when we start making those things we reach to the next level to the moksha and all so i think that's how a teacher and a learner can also uh, when they find some element of scientific understanding in every phenomenon that they are observing everything that is there in the objects and the subjects uh, we can definitely make the learning better and uh, it it really aligns with the law of nature as well so that's how we try to make the patterns and uh, of course yeah so coming back to the gestaltism uh, that basically tells us that pattern is what the mind is reading so if we also elaborate the patterns in every subject okay there are some parallel lines where everywhere and they all are connected interconnected um, uh, as a whole so we are able to highlight the thing to the students that yes you are not doing much different in this subject and that subject but majorly they are all having the similar laws and if you grasp the just the technique um, then you can also apply to and uh, the other subjects and which is called as the transfer skills that we say in the ib and igcc language so using their transfer skills so that that's that's a great service to education 
if we uh, if we are able to do that if we are if we even try to achieve that i think it's a, a best way to do for me so uh, that's what is that's why i tried to come into gestaltism although it was a little uh, drift from the topic uh, some of you may think so but i hope i have made uh, enough uh, the connection visible to you now so nice so next thing is like uh, that we understood why and we understood what to integrate so we understood why we do that to make connections to to show that all this is leading to all lead, all roads lead to rome then uh, how so the building blocks the third thing is how otherwise music helps because of the pattern uh, making and because of the habitual uh, a, a methodic way to look at everything in patterns so for example i think very commonly known thing is earlier they used to make you wrote learn the tables but now they are all being taught the tables in mathematics are being taught as a pattern and in numbers and uh, they just establish the the boxes and two twos are four or something like that and uh, that's being taken care of rather than having to rote learn it they are being made evident through patterns although rote learning is also a very important factor so coming to that rote learning which is uh, usually a punching bag but we also know that at many occasions we need that to be uh, that is important learning as well so what is the memory and music connection any examples that help you memorize something uh, and that was because of a musical connection to it do we have any examples in mind if i just talk from the foundational level itself i think the uh, the learning of english alphabet in a particular sequence mm. the the rhyme you know a b c d e f g you know it makes it so easy for a child to pick it up rather than ma'am this is not allowed ma'am this is to pehle hi padh ke aa gaye ma'am aise nahi hota okay <laughs> <Get> yes <charged. laughs> so yeah uh, just kidding uh, humor apart yes yes very 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 nice example and it was you will see that it was there in my other slides okay so a very good example that a b c d even, they have no uh, interconnected uh, sorry yeah uh, even a uh, child they can remember the poems when we uh, sing no so rhymes uh, uh, student they could able to remember the rhymes because of the musical tone which is there in that absolutely so uh, very true so the the gregorian chants the vedic chants also the stotra shlokas uh, the vedas itself they have traveled through the time to us only through the rote learn way and sir, that's how we could excuse me sir as we have yes. seen in sound of music the teacher was training like do adhi on a simpler way by saying that do uh, g do like that do adhi a female do like that only and yes. in our sense we have learned that one two buckle my shoe three four shut the door like that only correct also help you to remember the poem as well as the musical sargam I, I absolutely absolutely the note song the alphabet song the number songs they are yes. actually yeah they have been made uh, so that in a musical way so that they can be remembered yes, easily because yes. mathematics as we see sorry yes please Yes, sir. That is what I'm saying. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yeah. Super. Super. Yes. Uh, and let's not lose it. So uh, it's not just there that we can do it. This can be done even in the uh, senior grades. Uh, so, so some some of the I have seen some people making a song of the elements of the periodic table, or making a story of it, and then um, the the they can be easily uh, sorry easily remembered by the children because there is some kind of a connection. within those otherwise unconnected or disconnected elements for example mathematics is totally abstract totally abstract and that's why 1 2 3 4 this uh, this continuity has to be taught that way and later on they realize that how 2 plus 2 is 4 why it is 2 plus 2 uh, why 2 plus 2 is 4 so uh, what what makes it 3 into 3 is 9 and 3 plus 3 is 6 but all these are concepts which cannot be made uh, easily visible to the learner 
so initially when they have to remember we convert them into certain patterns so like there are dr seus s e u s um, you can visit the website so many science related songs uh, this person has created and some others are created uh, have created they are creating even i have done it so uh, that can be done so something that is difficult to remember we can feed the brain in the uh, form of patterns and then the brain understand wow okay Th thank you very much this is possible for me because it is falling in some pattern and i can remember the pattern although the pattern itself is of certain maybe disconnected or not so uh, interrelated terms uh, directly which are visible to the mind so i would i would like to give an example of uh, a jingle i think it sure. was advertisement of a soap or something yeah uh, which has these lines babar ka beta humayu humayu ka akbar i think mm -hmm. this solves a lot of trouble for a lot of children who find it difficult in history to remember who's whose son yeah yeah <laughs> very true very true so yeah so uh, it is it is obvious uh, the connection between memory and music mm -hmm. per se not music itself but the patterns which make music uh, individually just one tone doesn't make music so it's like using monochrome okay it may still have meaning in visual arts but mono monochrome in sense of music monotone will be so monotonous that you don't want to look at it or hear it for a long so so we can also this music this yes, musical please. notes can be uh, this musical notes can be helpful to teach ascending and descending order also in math absolutely and in programming uh, you can use uh, the series yes. programming you can you can define an array you can save some numbers there and you can recall them randomly and those numbers are related to some notes and that's your composition so you can say that a sequence is of 3 or a sequence of 4 so those the those many number of notes are recalled from the array they are reported back and if it is giving you sama pa ga and you play it on a keyboard you are done you have made a sequence of 4 and in the series progression so you can teach linear series also you can wonderfully find out uh, second order uh, equations and you can find out put the values in x and y and find out uh, what is the outcome of that uh, in the form of the notes and what are the uh, answers coming out and a collection of those answers and then you form a musical composition out of that uh, that can also be done um, and it can be found with a lot of interest by the children because those are not just uh, empty values of x y z but they are replaced by the notes do re mi fa sa re ga ma so then they may find wow what is the answer what is the uh, final output and uh, that output can be converted into strings rather than having mathematical numbers so th those are not uh, 2348 or something but they could be sa ma pa ga or something combination that is the output and you play and what is the composition like what it looks like so Yeah, but that again, we a little bit drifted from the memorization aspect from uh, uh, from where we started actually. So memorization is uh, basically when we make it into patterns, it is memor it it is easily memorizable. And then the things that we need to know, the historical dates which have no connection actually, we cannot make any logic out of it. So when the Second World War happened, has no connection with our prior knowledge. It just has to be stored information which we just recall. so so it's 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 form based mainly so that's that's what all i have to say about the memory and music next uh, yeah i i already said that these are the basic example shloka sutras alphabet song see ma'am i told you it's there in my slide musical notes uh, one other teacher said yes so there are huge benefits of memorization known to us all and how much ever we emphasize the importance of conceptual understanding rote has its strength and its applications so some rules uh, you know newton's first law second law third law we may not be able to remember with any pattern so we can create certain things and uh, help the child or anyone to learn about it. because it has not to do with intellects but it has to do with the memory recalling so all that can be done but when uh, if we find out that someone is not at all interested in music what do we do not necessarily that everyone may find musical concepts 
or musical linkages as interesting. So it may also help us as educators to find out what's the passion of the child. So when we are teaching the learners, um, the knowledge seekers, the truth seekers, we also want to find out what is the best way they can learn. What are their passions? So a bit of it, when the learning support department and um, other learn enhancement or what to say enrichment um, of people, they can be also uh, like observing the students and interacting with them. And if we uh, if we help discover their passions, we may also take the help of uh, that passion to 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 program our lessons, to configure our lessons, and to find another aspects of integration uh, to trigger the, the liking in the child, the learner, uh, like the learner groups. Or maybe we may find certain groups that they are passionate about this thing, they're passionate about that thing. And as I said, as, as I've understood, rather, as I said, as someone wise, wise men have said, so all road leads to Rome. As uh, the, all subjects, they're going to somewhere or the other way going to connect with each other at certain level we want to find those linkages that may come through uh, the discovery of passion or identifying the passion even your own passion not all the teachers may have a liking for music so but i i, I believe and i have seen that music is absolutely there intrinsically in us and in everything that we are looking around even a car horn has a musical value to that the duration is there, a pitch is there, even the fan rotates and it creates a frequency. So if we have the, our eyes open, we have a, a heart beating since we took birth till we die. And it has a very constant um, rhythm, if we can um, highlight that. So, so and, and if there, there is even two, three beats here and there, and our life may be in danger. So we are living with that constant, this is called as a tempo, constant speed in music. So the rhythm of the heartbeats that can be shown, that can be made, it's a measurable, it's visible. So when we make it visible, uh, a good biology lesson can integrate with that. There are also biorhythms in nature. If we talk about uh, rhythm, so the, the, the way the cycles of the nature happen, even our bodily cycles happen, the passage rites happen, that has a rhythm to it. And when that rhythm is disturbed, our life is possibly into some danger or certain rough patch we are going through. So there are enough number of connections with rhythm and biology also. So uh, after, of course, it depends on which from which level we are starting. So passion basically helps us deliver certain things which are otherwise impossible. If we are able to trigger that as an educator, it may go a long way in ensuring a very good understanding of the subject like King of the subject which you never liked, and uh, it, it is going to be of great help for the future generations. So uh, people allow their emotions to be affected by the music they listen to, and this vulnerability places a great deal of responsibility on the musicians too. Songs can alter people's perspectives on different subjects. So again, that is a connection with the humanities, social studies, which uh, music has been a part of it from the very beginning, to relieve the stress, to, to celebrate, to express what cannot be expressed to plain words. Um, our Indian Bollywood movies uh, really take good help of uh, the, this quality of music. And uh, mostly the songs are made on uh, some or the other emotion. So we have been seeing that for every other occasion, we have a song or a melody in every part of India, even in the whole world, not just India. So passion serves a vital role in achieving success. And if we help the learner teacher identify their passions, this may lead to some very wonderful results. Um, see, I, I was a chemical engineer till my age of 20. I had not become an engineer, but I just knew that music I liked. Uh, and somewhere in the back of mind, it was hiding. And suddenly at my age of 20, um, 21 rather, 2021, 20, uh, it started, uh, it, it was like a flood. It blew my mind. And I suddenly I started uh, doing many things which people take five, five, six, six or 10 years to learn. I discovered that well, this is something huge in me and I want to do that. I, I'm not going to get ever bored of doing music, but also I like my 
the engineer in me so i try to always make connections even my learning help through engineering concepts in and and vice versa and uh, that really helped me gain deeper understandings in a very very fast uh, very quickly uh, in, in a very short span of time so that that we, that can also help us so uh, th and there can be multiple passions it's not like i used to think that there can be only one passion for someone uh, when deep reading i went through and i understood there can be multiple passions and they need not cross each other's path so it's not necessary that someone a, a, a student is very very inclined to suppose football or soccer and he may or she may not have an inclination or a passion to music as well how do we serve these passions and they, uh, we can channelize the energies also an important aspect about it so follow your passion and the success will follow as they say so uh, i think we are already around just 10 to 12 minutes left for this session so i'll try to not spend much time on this but how to identify passion this uh, ppt is shared with um, the school so these links can be referred to many people uh, uh, all of us and uh, we can visit these pages how to identify passion um, and uh, as they say passion is this link could you copy and paste it in the chat box yes i will do that So I have pasted this. This is a short video about how to identify passion. And uh, the another link that um, I'm pasting is of uh, okay. Okay. These are certain some some ways to find out passion identify. So is it the same link? I'm sorry, there is some mistake. But uh, anyways, this is not shown. Stop sharing. Ah, this is the link. Um, yeah, we find your passion. Stop presenting after then, then it will happen. Yes, this is the another link. How to find a passion? Yes. So these are some ways to help us find out the passion. And then we can work on, again, uh, like there is another saying. So when they say in Upanishads, like Om Purna Madha Purna Midam Purna Purna Madhuchyate Purna Se Purna Madha Purna Meva Vishishyate Am I audible? 
hello yes yes sir. Sir. yes yes so all so yeah so all this is whole what comes out of this whole is also a whole in itself what remains after we remove the whole is also the whole so all roads lead to rome in other way and even if we find out different passions and we identify different strengths and skills we can still make them a connection as a whole and we can effect the integration in that way that's what my point was so how to integrate now there is another we already seen something about this uh, please refer to the passion thing later on maybe or side by side but in the first slide we saw how the components per se render themselves for integration cause when we said beat or rhythm or the pattern now let us see some advanced example can we share a topic in science i am more inclined to that because uh, being an engineer but we can also try some other disciplines and uh, some topic in science maybe we can brought in here as a point of discussion we can try to find out how we can integrate so before we do that so the integration can be of Uh, mainly of three types we can see that the conceptual linking is on a form level so form level is uh, something like a note and how the note is formed it's a sound it has a frequency and then we can use it function function is something that uh, a more of a conceptual level that how does it function so how that is uh, interconnected function and connection so what is the Uh, progression from one note to the other note how does the note has a length of time so wh- when it becomes note and when it is a tone so just a musical sound becomes tone but the functionality of existing for a particular amount of time and then vanishing makes it a note so the tone becomes a note when a duration aspect as i said crotchet so the crotchet beat crotchet beat is one 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 count so it's like 1 2 3 4 so a crotchet sa will be sa sa nothing 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 a minimum sa will be like sa two counts or a semi brief sa will be sa four count so there is a duration attached to it imagine if a note is just played continuously endlessly it is being played even though it may be the perfect the best kind of a note after a while you will feel irritated and it can no more be music for you if all the tones just exist endlessly there once created so it's 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 again falling back to the vedas like everyone who has taken birth so has to die like that the tone has to have a certain duration uh, if it is endless like ashwatthama then it's no more going to be interesting if all the lives on earth just remain there um, forever and ever the earth will no longer be a interesting place so the form based linkages function and connection so i think we are coming to the end of this session it's around 426 just 4 minutes remaining uh, uh, sh- shall we take an example here from a science or we need to sign off ready hello yes sir yes uh, uh we so uh, i was uh, given the example in the breathing the inhalation and exhalation over there the science topic which is very much related with the flute <coughs> okay great <laughs> Uh, i think there is a lot of noise uh, some from somewhere someone can you all please mute except the for the speaker hello sir are you there i'm there there is a lot of noise coming from some one of the um mics i think someone has mic open <coughs> okay. uh because i feel it's it's all clear okay uh i i i was getting some noise okay no problem yeah so shall we take an example or do we do we want to have a kind of a 
sample or example someone wants to have a query or someone wants to find out how we can do the linkages in the form function and connection aspect i think someone wanted to speak yes uh, and and then i raised a hand so participants yes. feel free you can unmute your mic and speak up we can have a kind of a use case or case study regarding that so if if not then i think this is i would like to share you know some example please so, ma'am you're welcome there, yes there are some students who are good at writing songs some who yes. are good at uh, composing music and some good at singing so you know as a class together after a topic or a concept is understood this can be taken up as a class project to turn that concept into a song some of the students who are good with concept as well can be a part of the first team who who prepare the draft the write up for the song to write the song and then right. rest of the students can get engaged into creating uh, composing music for it and the singers can finally deliver it so okay. the way the concept has been thoroughly explained in a musical way yes and everybody together listens and sings it i think this is a kind of integration through form in the in form yes in form of yes. a song concepts in the form of a song correct correct uh in it in, in the form of a song as well uh, and as such the elements are being used uh, as a lyrics right? right so that's why it is a form based connection because they are related to the physical structure or the written language or how it sounds that has been used as i said the elements of a periodic table periodic table so those uh, abbreviations of the elements have been used to create or the full forms so that is a form based connection which is one good way of doing connection and the functional connection any other example if we have anyone can point out or you can say a topic we can find out the connection sir um... i would like to share one experience with you okay. uh, when i was uh, teaching to eighth class uh, topic was uh, life cycle of frog okay ah, so yes. i uh, uh, ha yes so one of the child he has uh, written the lyrics and uh, two student they sing it very nicely mm -hmm. uh, entire uh, various stages of the life cycle of the frog and the song uh, is very um, i think uh, it was very uh, useful for the student to remember all the stages of the life cycle of the frog great it, it was very wonderful uh, song so so which of my slides relate to this example could you tell me uh, connection it's if we say it's the memory and music because yeah. you have helped the person remember the characteristics of the frog or the life cycle of a frog again that's a form based connection not conceptual yeah. so if we want to mm -hmm. look at the conceptual linkage we will have to see that how the stages of a frog are changing with time and what way and what change occurs to a musical composition with time with a note with respect to time so the life okay. cycle of creating a song if we uh, understand and we'll try to relate to that possible it cannot be forced to every topic but i'm uh, explaining how we can turn it into a conceptual linkages the concept of growth the concept of a progress can be established in music when we are teaching them the form of a composition structure of a composition and how it develops how it builds from the first bar to the last one and that's a life cycle of a song it starts and then it ends so the whole song in 5 minutes is being performed it has undergone a stages like intro right that it at the end it's outro mm -hmm. and so uh, mm -hmm. yeah when it builds up it is telling us a story a song essentially is telling us a story so yeah so initially it starts with some two lines which is like an intro it's a chorus it's a main message of the song mm -hmm. right and yeah. then elements of music are added the harmony melody um, a melody is advanced there are parallel a uh, polyphonic um, um, elements are added so like the the various powers of, of the frog in the growing stage are maybe 
it develops the power the the strength just like any other life form okay uh, of course then the dying is effect is not matching going to match with the music but the end how end said it we fade out so slowly the powers are withdrawn and then we end so we slowly slowly one of one of one by one the faders are going out one one track okay and ultimately end of music and it's a full stop with some kind of a announcement so you know that's kind of a conceptual linkage what i am talking the functionality is involved in it how it progress wonderful example when we are trying to do the form um, trying to make the child understand the form uh, the way you have done it so absolutely taken so this is a very very valid format of uh, integration form based integration when you want to make elaborate the concept on a higher level then i'm saying the conceptual linkage is come do you agree i hope uh, it made sense yes. to you yes sir yes sir in fact what you are saying is something very very profound and people need to revisit what you have said in this talk and rethink on this to actually build the right connection because this seems to be really profound to me i can see miss uh, dhanushree raising her hand dhanushree if you want to ask or share something yes ma'am uh, namaste namaste sir uh, namaste everyone uh, sir i just wanted to uh, actually i was thinking when you were asking the connection between or integration between music and science so one topic came in my mind i don't know whether how much it will integrate but uh, uh, we have different types of instruments like uh, instruments through water instruments uh, um plays through wind and then string so can we uh, connect this to the properties of matter uh, and how uh, sound travels okay i am i'm sorry but uh, your voice was not clear it was breaking in the middle and give me 10 seconds i want to connect my charger to the mac it's dying just a moment sure. Yes, could you come again, please? Um, I can. Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. So I was talking about. Can we? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, ma'am. Because your voice was breaking, I think I could uh, understand your question. What she means is there are different kinds of instruments like water based or uh, wind based, etc. Mm -hmm. Okay. So can they be connected to teach uh, properties of matter? Dhanushree, if there is a difference, please uh, unmute and speak. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, same thing. I was asking. So, can we connect it to uh, learn the uh, property of uh, matter, like solid, liquid, and gas, and how it uh, means we can differentiate it with the help of musical instrument? Is it possible, sir? Absolutely. Okay. Now, uh, may not be to the core of the properties of matter, but we can very well connect with it because a uh, sound is formed with the medium, and that's what is. called as a, like you know wind instrument if it is what is vibrating what is the medium that vibrates to create a sound uh, that is the 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 cat, that's how the categorization of the instruments is done okay wind instrument is using a air column with vibrations of air column um, it's creating the sound string instruments the vibrating medium is a string so it is a string instrument reed based instruments like harmonium and all okay so they are called as reeds so they have some metallic strips which are involved in creating sound okay then jal tarang a uh, water based so uh, we we there is nothing like water based uh, or hydraulic instrument uh, but uh, because uh, that was i think made up quite a bit uh, in the later stages of the evolution of music so i am not aware of any categorization of water based instrument but jal tarang is definitely an established instrument and it is having a full fledged performances uh, in many parts of the world so uh we can call it as a water column which is making the sound happen along with the um the material that is the bowls are constructed with so how can we highlight the properties of a matter here for that we need to understand the tone and the timbre of the sound 
so the why what makes the sound differ is the construction material used or the vibrating material used the matter which is involved in creating the sound so that's why a flute sounds different from a violin a violin sounds different from a guitar and the vocal voice of a human voice is sounding from differently from there so what's the difference is the property of the material here and what property of the material involved is how well it carries the vibrations so uh, very good very good question uh, dhanashree mesh okay because uh, there are there are questions of that kind but here it's very typical because how the properties coming into picture for creating a specific uh, variation in the tone is what is uh, in question and uh, this can be highlighted uh, i don't know like we have a hit capacity or we have a coefficient of friction so something like that there could be a coefficient of vibration maybe uh, yeah. which is uh, which is the internal intermolecular vibration that is Just, creating the typical sound yes uh, this can be explored to a very good level if i could add to this uh, yes ma'am yeah so i think uh, it's it's actually about properties of sound more which connects to properties of matter mm. suppose if you have to prove if a child says how to confirm that air has matter because we can't see it so mm. as we know sounds property that sound would travel sound waves travel through some medium and because flute and such instruments they create yes. sound it clearly shows that this air has matter because okay. sound waves only travel through matter so i think this okay. is how we can correct yes second yes. thing for those instruments where we have a uh, let's say tabla so it's a solid surface on which vibration is happening so these particles are are aligned next to each other in a tabla that surface what do we call it uh, i don't know the membrane membrane the membrane, membrane right so these particles of solid are attached next to each other but they still can vibrate at their place so this vibration can happen in solids yes it can yes. happen in liquids as well as gas so yes. to some extent it is actually talking about properties of sound but you can connect it to the kind of matter through which sound is passing not exactly all the properties of uh, those matters can be explained through sound itself yeah what the even uh, there, 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 uh, 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 even uh, sir, uh, even we can uh, connect the uh, gel term to explain the properties of liquid. Correct. Yeah, but then properties of matter that uh, yes is definitely. Uh, 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 what I wanted to highlight is properties of matter can also be highlighted, ma'am. When I was explaining the strings and the reeds, so uh, the 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 frequency goes when the matter is stretched. so and also when the metallic strips in the winter they may sound higher frequency and in uh, summers they may sound lower frequency which can be actually heard and observed that the length of the string expands uh, due to its property so thermal expansion topic can be thermal, absolutely with. explored from this yes amazing uh, amazing and, and even even so a flute being played uh, a flute being pl played uh, during summers uh in a very hot and dry environment may create uh, tonal vibrations than in a damp environment uh, like mumbai uh, in in so in the rains so you may experience the difference in tone and the artists uh, definitely feel it even the tabla when we are playing live uh, during the winters especially uh, or actually any extreme seasons uh, wherever it is observed what happens is the tabla which is a tuned percussion uh, starts getting uh detuned uh, in the course of time because of the winter the skin it's made of actually animal skin although dead but uh, it has a property to contract during the winter okay and so tabla ab jitna bhi aap chadhaoge uska sur utarte jata hai in the winter and in summer it goes on expanding so it will become sharper this so is very well observed phenomena and uh, this is also uh, well observed because the why the piano needs tuning all the time why you need to tune a guitar because the harmonics change 
So right. what the guitar freaks are doing? So the physical property, yeah, a best example for property of material will be a nylon strings guitar and a metallic strings guitar. Right. So they they create different notes at different positions. The fret positions are changed. So uh, yeah, of course, but a little bit of insight into not a little bit, a good insight into music is required for uh, for even this to to strike in your mind in one's mind. Now I can say that because I know that. But uh, so that's why integration is also important within the uh, all the teaching group basically. So middle years suppose they are sitting. So if they can plan their lessons together, integration, which happens in IB, PYP, MYPD. So when they plan together, then they are able to find these interdisciplinary linkages. So um, if there are people, some one or two people can also, it, it, if if it comes to their mind, if they if it occurs to them, they can say yes, this is a. Uh, comparison that can that can be drawn or similar energy can be analogy can be showed so an effect uh, what you can do is in the lab we can uh, tie a string to two fixed points and you can raise the temperature of the string and see what's happening so you attach a heating coil to it or just put a, a bunsen burner or something on one end or somewhere where it starts heating up a little bit and after some time the same string is creating a different note so that's the physical property of the metal uh, coefficient of thermal expansion which is coming into play to decide the note this is this is simply fantastic i loved this uh, idea so yes we can definitely try this out thank you very clearly yes. indicating how the humidity temperature etc wind speed also maybe when the strings are very fine i don't know of such instruments but then how these different features of the environmental conditions can affect Definitely, the these dynamics. Yeah. Yes, these dynamics are there, and uh, unknowingly. Question. Sorry, I had one another another question. Yes, Most welcome, ma'am. Yep. So sorry to cut you. You were saying something. No, no, no problem. No, I said uh, most people observe this, but they don't know why is it happening. Mm -hmm. So artists, uh, those who are those who have no exposure to that, they can sim yeah. in a very simplistic way they can. Ha, yeah, garmi hai na, isliye aisa ho raha hai. So, why is that phenomena a teacher can explain? Very true. So, even the music enthusiasts would uh, benefit a lot if they have a scientific background. Acumen, Science. yeah, yeah. And mathematical. I can see the patterns thing that you spoke about. Math is all about patterns and repetitions, and music also is on the same uh, lines. So, there could be projects of math, science, and music together, interdisciplinary project, as you have spoken. Now, the question that I was asking you: yes. uh, There are certain ragas which are performed at specific times of the day or night yes so does it have to do with the conditions of the uh, weather during those times or it's it has to do with the state of mind at that time why certain ragas played at certain times only okay a, a good question this th time theory is only uh, with indian music hindustani music uh, there is no other music culture who have thought uh, given such a deep thought about uh, with times of the ragas so uh, the the very difficult question to answer uh, that way because uh, what made them think there are two things combined one thing is the vibrational energies felt on different times of earth cycle second thing is that the what the changes that occur to the um, vibration energies second thing is with the brain also uh, how brain responds? What what is the electric electrochemical activity, as they say, in the brain when you hear to a sound, uh, which is clearly defined that when you hear some semitones or komal swaras, you hear, then it creates a feeling of pathos, a feeling of longingness, uh, some kind of a sorrow. So, uh, and and when there are major notes played, natural, the brain feels happy because that kind of uh, uh, some whatever chemical is secreted in the brain, um, it's it's connected to that. So the brain activity has been very uh, successfully mapped by the scientists, and the effect of sound has been observed and very well recorded. And uh, they also called it Mozart effect later on after a few thousand years, uh, when Mozart also observed and he said that this is Mozart effect, and he actually mapped certain semitones uh, when heard by brain what kind of a perception it is creating in the mind which uh, area of the brain is activated what are those areas of the lobe and uh, basically it's a sense of 
sound sound doesn't exist it creates certain perceptionary perceptory signal to the brain that's all as said there is nothing like sound which right. can be heard so so, so yes. it's it's somewhere physiological and yeah. psychological as well yes. so while talking to you parallelly i just made a quick search and as per ayurveda it talks of uh, you know the condition of the, the cycle of kapha pitta and dosh in us at particular times of the day right that it relates to so what you said very much goes in sync with that yes uh, thank you so much for uh, this quick search and also supporting information <laughs> ma'am and uh, yeah kapha pitta and uh, i think what i had understood uh, before that that is related to the vibrational things because that's why they say overnight food hota hai wo dusre din basi wo kyun nahi khana hai because it undergoes certain chemical changes through the night so what has changed actually is just the other part of the world that uh, other, like away from sun we are so that night or the the distance from the sun trigger certain kind of vibrations or cosmic energies and that's how we, we our body creates more acid or uh, mm -hmm. uh, like those kind of secretions in our body amazing i think I, we are coming up with wonderful project topics <laughs> yes connecting science with music <laughs> yeah so you are giving yeah, wonderful what information sir this is and this is so much so deep Uh, miss uh, shaila also mentioned that it could also have to do with the state of the throat the vocal cords at particular times of the day yes so when we are sleep it is a very normal physical uh, what you can say i don't know what word exactly it can be explained as but when we are asleep uh, for a few hours our vocal voice box and our vocal pipe is spread out long wider and uh, that's why when we wake up early in the morning we can create more bass notes because the diameter of the pipe is increased and so it's more like a bass voice like when we are waking up so it's it's a deeper voice in the morning and as the day rises it's it it comes to the our natural or uh, pitch or pitch of talking so even even when the children are born the babies have very small diameter obviously so their voice is very shrieky and very their cry like we cannot sometimes even like we cannot tolerate it's very uh, harsh to the ears because very sharp frequencies they are creating and as we grow up then some of the tones some of the frequencies are added and uh, our voice matures for they say right so the secondary like, development that we talk about uh, in right. adolescence that yes. also impacts exactly. the vocal cords yes and through the day as uh, you know many changes are there so i uh, it's it will be very interesting to find out that why they occur uh, through the day time what is the exact effect of maybe be, being away from sun on equator if that is so then uh, towards the north pole and south pole there may be different uh, changes happening to the body wow <laughs> i think uh, you know curiosity has been uh, raised and Triggered, yeah. more so the purpose of the talk has been solved where we had to get into a new realm which is completely new and which pushes us for new learnings and i have always found that with you whenever i have interacted whether it is about philosophy it is about history it is about sciences or it is about music or anything for that matter what i appreciate is the openness that you have for all kinds of knowledge and and ease with which you understand things connect them and uh, share with people it has been an excellent experience today thank you in this talk i thank all these uh, wonderful audience who always engage actively and very openly thanks for being the 38th aadhar shila today abhijit sir thank Wish you, you all the best it's my honor this and privilege to be here i can say you know being a colleague of yours um, that we are very proud of you rris is 